It feels like everyone and their mother has asked me about the Toronto real estate market in the last little while. So here's a video. All right, before we hop into the numbers, I have to touch on this interest rate thing because we haven't seen anything like this in decades, okay? Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, interest rates were in the high teens, but house prices were significantly lower, so it didn't make as big of a difference. Now, we've had six interest rate hikes in just a few months, which is making it very difficult for people with variable mortgages. And I'll give you my own personal example. I bought a property about a year ago, it's an investment property with a variable rate. My monthly payment was about $1,700 a year ago. Now, after those six rate hikes, my monthly payment is almost $2,800. Okay, and that's on a purchase price of $455,000. So at this point, um, a lot of people who are in those higher brackets in the $1 million, $2 million ranges, if you have variable mortgages, it might be very difficult in the next couple of years. When a bank approves you, they usually get you a pre-approval of 90 to 120 days, okay? So you not only have to find a property and purchase it, but you also have to close on the property as well within that 120 day period for that interest rate to remain what it is. That's still why we're seeing pretty good market activity right now because those people that are locked in, you know, they have to purchase something within the next couple of months. If they don't, they will have to requalify at a higher rate. For example, if you got pre-qualified for an interest rate of four and a half percent and you locked into that for four months and you've been looking for a house for two months that you haven't found, you only have two months now to find a house and close on that property, so take possession of that property uh, for that to keep that same interest rate. Whereas if you don't find something and that interest rate expires, you'll have to requalify at you know five percent, five and a half percent, making your affordability less. So your buying power is going to go down. So that's kind of the situation we're in. I see house prices continuing to go down in the new year if the rate hikes continue, but at the same time, buying power will be lower. So it'll even itself out. In my opinion, there are advantages to purchasing properties in this market. Number one, your purchase price is gonna be lower. Number two, you're gonna to have to put down less money. And then in the long run, if you're keeping the property five to 10 years, the interest rates have to come down at some point. So when they do, that's when you can refinance and get yourself a bit of a better monthly payment. Let's jump right into the numbers. So from October 2021 to October 2022, there have been 49% less total sales in the city of Toronto. Now, what does that tell us? People just aren't buying and selling properties at the same rate. Now, from personal experience, some of the sellers that I've been working with, you know, if they don't get a certain number, they're okay with holding on to the property for a little while and not selling it. They're okay with relisting in the new year or holding it for a year, leasing it and relisting it later on. So that's something that I've noticed. The average sale price for all property types in Toronto is 1.089 million, which is down 5.7% from October of 2021 to October of 2022. Prices have dropped, but I have to say that certain areas still remain very strong. So Bloor West Village, High Park, Ronsi, Swansea, you have Lawrence Park, Leaside, places like that and certain micro markets tend to retain value significantly better than other places in the city. Let's get into the detached market. The average sale price of a detached property in Toronto for October 2022 is 1,609,000, which is actually down 10% from October of 2021. Okay, so the detached market is down 10%. The semi-detached market is at 1.209 million, which is down 8% from last year. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The townhouse market has stayed fairly strong because last year the average townhouse sale was around a million dollars, whereas this year it's almost at a million dollars as well. I think a lot of that has to do with people wanting to stick under that million dollar mark so they don't have to put down 20% as a down payment. The condo market is the most interesting stat of all because condo prices have literally not changed year over year. So in October of 2021, the average condo sale price was $740,000 in the city. This year, October 2022, the average condo sale price is $740,000. So no percentage change whatsoever. I think this has to do with people that aren't affording over a million or were at around that million dollar mark. 
with the interest rate increases, they can only afford a little bit less. So they're moving towards the condo market uh, more than the townhouse and the semi-detached market. Meaning that the condo market will remain fairly strong. And in my opinion, I think anything under a million dollars will remain fairly strong within the next couple of years. As I mentioned before, there are advantages to purchasing a property in this market. I always like to zoom out and look at the bigger picture because when you purchase a property, most of the time it's a long-term investment. You're not going to have as big of a purchase price right now as you did 6 to 12 months ago, which in turn means that you don't need as much cash up front for the down payment and everything else. And then long term, when the interest rates come down, which they will eventually, you can refinance and you'll end up winning in the long run. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the Toronto real estate market, send me a DM or give me a call. Or if you're thinking about buying or selling, click the link in my bio and we can set up a buyer presentation or a seller consult as soon as you'd like. Thanks again.